Hi. 15th of December, middle of the month, 10 days to Christmas. So I just thought I'd have a quick chat about the books I've read so far in December. And uh, I seem to have, it's only six. Normally I've got about seven or eight read by this time of the month. But I did say last month that December is a little bit on the busy side. I started, I've read uh, several arcs. How many arcs have I read? One, two, I've read three arcs um, this month. So the first book I read this month was uh, a book that comes out on the 15th of February and it's The Night Alphabet by Joelle Taylor. And this was amazing. It was a book that was so inventive. It, it sort of almost blew me away. It was the language, the images, um, the the visual element of the whole book. We were in 2223 20, in Word Hackney, and this woman Jones works it walks into a tattoo parlour. She's covered in tattoos, but she wants one final inking. She wants um, something to link every single tattoo. The two women in this um, tattoo parlour, and. They talk to her about her tattoos and each tattoo has got a story. And so you could say that this is a sort of, well, it's not a short story collection, but it's a, a collection of Jones's stories about her tattoos. And we go back in time. We go back to the 19th century and the mining, the mines. We go forward even further than 2233. Jones has what she calls rememberings. Um, she goes into other bodies, other times, becomes somebody else, and then comes back again. And each of these rememberings has got a story. Um, and, and some of them are, are quite chilling. Uh, the one with the quiet men is a chilling one. You've got sex workers, you've got murder, you've got revenge, you've got genetically modified babies. At each story, I found impact. There was, it, it, each story moved me. And I, I thought this was such an amazing, inventive book. It, I, it just blew me away, this one did. And that comes out on the 15th of February. Then I read... Um, Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan. Uh, say read, I listened to it on Audible. Cafe Nero have now got their own book awards. And this is shortlisted for the Fiction Prize. Uh, along with, let me get this right, um, The Bee Sting. I can't remember. I know The Bee Sting's on. I know I've read two of them. <laughs> I can't remember what they are. Oh, I should have looked at this. I will stick it down on the, the down below. Um, this one is about, um, it covers family, it covers alcoholism, social inequality. Um, we're in London and a three-year-old goes missing and is found dead. And 10-year-old Lucy Green is immediately blamed by the people on this London estate because Lucy comes from a family um, who moved to the estate um, in the 70s uh, from Ireland and they've never really been accepted. And this family are taken under the wing of a journalist, Tom, whisked away to a hotel because he's after the story, he's after the main story, he's after the dirt. And it's not a murder mystery. It's the story of a family. Um, Carmel, the mother, Richie, the um, Lucy's uncle, and John, Carmel and Richie's father. It's their story. Um, and this family, they're not an evil family. They're an ordinary family. And it's a book of ordinary human failings. And, uh, I enjoyed that one. Then I went on to one of my favourite authors, Mike Gale, Half a World Away. And this is a book about Kerry and Noah. Kerry is um, mum to Kian, 
she's a cleaner and she is a half sister to Noah who is a successful barrister who lives in a posh part of London with his wife and daughter. Um, but Noah doesn't know he's got a sister. The two of them were separated when they were taken into care and their lives turned out very differently. Noah was adopted by um, a white family. So he's had the story of sort of being a, a, a black child in a white family and everything that went with that. Um, and Kerry, she's a single mum and she is a cleaner and she works and works and works because Kian, her son, is everything to her. And then she decides to write to Noah to say, hi, I'm your sister. <laughs> and it's a letter that changes their, their lives. It's an emotional read. It's told in Kerry, Noah, Kerry, Noah, their points of view. And um, yeah, you will need tissues with that one. Well, I did. But then again, I usually do. Then I read a fantasy novel that comes out on the 5th of February, The Book of Doors. And this is a, a super book about the magic of books. Imagine a book, having a book in your hand that it can give you joy, it can give you pain, it can give you luck, it can give you safety. You know, these books have power. You know, have, have, Imagine having all these magical books and the power that you could have with them. I mean, we all know that books are magic anyway, but these are magical, magical, magical books. Um, our main character, Cassie, she works in a bookshop. Well, where else is she going to work? And she gets given by her, one of her customers this book. And she realises that um, there's nothing, she can't understand this book. It's full of indescribable squiggles. And if she goes to a door and imagines a door to another place, with, with, with this book, she opens the door and she's straight there. So she goes all over, revisiting places that she's been to before. But her best friend, Izzy, is warns her, you know, this, this book, are you sure this book is good? Are you sure there's nothing wrong with this book? Uh, and then she meets Drummond Fox and he says that, you know, you are in great danger because, you know, this book is people will kill for this book and um, it's his story of adventure and time travel and magic and danger and violence and I thought it was great. Then Joanna Cannon. Um, I've read a couple of Joanna Cannons before and this one we've got Linda who looks at life differently. She's very, she observes things. She um, She's her perception of the world around her is fascinating. You know, you, she, you see things through her eyes. And she's married to Derry, Terry, who's dull, who's boring, who's untidy. And she works part time in a charity shop. And she's recently moved house and she get, keeps getting these brochures, these lifestyle magazines for the previous occupant. And she decides that, you know, she could be best friends with this previous occupant. So she sets about finding her and stalking her and ingratiating herself into her life. It's quite creepy. But then this previous occupant, Rebecca, she's got plans for Linda as well. And then on top of this, we've got um, a serial killer on the loose and the police are interested in Linda's husband. So it's, it's not a, a, a thriller as such, but it's a sort of a deceptively twisty book. And that's a nice read as well. And then the final one that I read, um, we go back, yeah, I'm keeping on the serial killer theme. And it's The List of Suspicious Things by Jenny Godfrey that comes out on the 15th. The 5th, t start again, the 15th of February. Of all three books this time come out on the 15th of February and it's sort of like a compelling coming of age book we've got 11 year old um, Miv we're in Yorkshire it's the time of the Yorkshire Ripper and there's this 
this fear, this fear that is in the community because the Ripper is killing these women and no one, the women don't want to walk out anywhere. They're not, don't feel safe. And Miv decides that she's going to counter, she's going to try and catch the, 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 the Ripper. And so she makes a list of all the suspicious people, all the suspicious things. She's got a best friend, Sharon. And you, at the beginning, you know, she's so innocent and naive. She doesn't, she, you know, she's seeing things that we know the truth to, but she doesn't. And the book sort of goes over a period of two years. And by the time her 13th birthday comes, she's, matured and she ne she understands now more than she did before and uh, yeah it's a coming of age one and you've got racism in here you've got violence in here you've got bullying you've got domestic violence but the character of Miv shines through so I've had really yeah it's been a nice read this time I've had a couple of serial killers I've had magical realism I've had emotions um book of the the one in the top so far if I've got to pick a book so far you know we'll see what I'm like at the end of December but the front runner at the moment is going to be oh it's either going to be the night alphabet or the book of doors I think the night alphabet the night alphabet because that is so inventive so at the moment my front runner for December is the night alphabet by Joelle Taylor so, um, I will become popping on again between Christmas and whatever. So, I will see you again soon. So, happy reading. Take care.